Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today I wanted to talk about the delays with Alpha 3.0 and then a little tiny bit of hardware news and a quick channel update and that sort of jazz tagged on at the end too. So burn down and 3.0's delays. Star Citizen Alpha 3.0 is on its final push to its release, but it has suffered from delays. The project has received a lot of criticism about the schedule target dates and the new burn down segment, and CIG's community manager Zylo has made various statements over the Spectrum forums over the last few days regarding this, which we shall now read out. The intent of providing the burn down is to replace the inconsistent times and dates which were based on our best projections. It's to illustrate the very tasks that we need to tackle regularly. It doesn't mean the sky is falling, rather it provides further transparency using actual trackable numerical values. We get it, and we were still working on our production schedule processes, and we're wading through uncharted territory here when it comes to this level of transparency. We're not being disingenuous. This is a massive update, and the pieces truly are coming together. We always need to look into creative things to be more transparent with all of you, with Around the Verse and the Burndown, and we have had decided the changes we made with the schedule will provide them more insight into how things are going. This update is huge, our biggest yet, and there are so many moving parts to get into the patch of this magnitude, and there's lots of hurdles and challenges, and we'll continue to communicate those as best as possible. Our thoughts with this process is that it's the easiest to digest when you get to see week over week the changes, especially since some days there are none, and other days there's a tremendous jump when a new feature comes online. We'll continue to evaluate how effective this is and if we need to change any frequency of updates. During development, bugs will shift in priority depending on their impact on game flow and severity. Marketing does not impact published dates at all. We genuinely want this release just as bad as all of you, and we're taking all the steps to do just that. We've also been very upfront about the nature of the challenges, and our dates were based on what we thought we could hit, and we adjusted as we went along. Still, we feel that the new burndown method is a better approach so that you can understand what you're faced with, and we're making efforts to present full insight into all of those challenges in an easy and trackable format. We are currently doing something to a level that has never been done before. With the curtains pulled back, it reveals a common path travelled by project managers and software developers, largely unseen by the public. We understood the hurdles that would come with this type of communication, but we made the decision to be transparent and we'll stand by it. So, I personally trust CIG to make a fantastic game. Everything I've read, seen on the ATV, presentations, office tours, that shows me that. They're going to make something quite beautiful. Our influence impacts that as well. We can get stuff changed, we can get balanced, we can get mechanics removed or changed around or whatever as the game develops. I love that form of open development. I do not, however, trust CIG with their estimates of dates. That said, more information is always going to be better for me. I'd rather see those target dates. I'd rather see the burn down, problems, progress, blockers, challenges, changes, Everything is useful to me, even if it turns out to be incorrect in the future. It's, it's As long as they are giving that information to the best of their ability, I think that's what you want. You just have to be aware that those target dates, some of them are extremely optimistic or don't account for blockers, or something unforeseen happens. And that's the nature of them giving those internal dates rather than some form of padded figure. So those target dates are rarely going to be met. After 3.0 is released, however, we should see a changes in how patches are handled, and there's going to be less waiting for content, as they can just bolt it on to the new persistent universe and build upon the PU with the Delta patcher. They can add content as and when it's ready, basically. So we'll see 3.0 soon, but it could be a week or it could be six, based on blockers encountered now and in the Eva Carti phase. Estimated dates with future endeavours should be a bit more accurate, but that that does remain to be seen. Just take dates with a pinch of salt, but only a pinch as people are salty enough about delays already. Intel's Coffee Lake CPUs are going to be unveiled on the 21st of August. These are the eighth generation of Intel CPUs and could boast a 30% improvement on the last generation, which is KB Lake. Um, so more processors, even if it's just evolutions and refreshes, does mean more power and cheaper CPUs in the market. Uh, if you go to like the previous generation or two generations ago, you can get a really cheap CPU. If you buy stuff on eBay as well, like I do, I happy to buy secondhand hardware on eBay. <laughs> the reason I mention this is because Coffee Lake is 
likely to favor eight to 12 threads with extremely strong individual core performance, which is going to be perfect for Star Citizen Alpha 3.0. Although Star Citizen is getting more optimized with better multi-threading and stuff's getting pushed over to other cores and other threads, we won't see lots of this multi-threaded kind of performance gains until closer to Star Citizen's release or at least further into development. I'm waiting to see what these CPUs can do before purchasing a Threadripper sale or something like that, um, at the very least anyway. And remember, buy CPUs based on your needs, like Threadrippers, that sort of stuff. Great if you're doing 3D modeling and video editing, but if you're just on for gaming, you might not need so many and just, just buy a CPU that suits your needs if you are building a new computer. Um, some other stuff as well. No Man's Sky has received a big update, 1.3, and actually makes it kind of enjoyable now. Um, it sort of, kind of has a little bit of multiplayer now as well. You can talk to other people and you see floating orbs around rather than, um, I know, animations of people running around, which is a bit weird, but um, they are improving their game, which is good. I'm glad they didn't do a cash grab. I'm glad they are um, continuing to work towards what we wanted at release, but we'll have to continue watching that. Um, I, I am, it's, it's definitely worth $20 now, no man's going, it was never worth $60, that was cray cray. And um, there's some other quite enjoyable space games around at the moment, actually, Elite Dangerous, The Long Journey Home, um, FTL, uh, Halcyon 6, uh, Everspace, Planet Nomads, there's a few, so check those out, um, I will be on the channel at some point, talking about things that, well, probably on the stream. Uh, I'm going to start streaming again this week uh, with some PUBG and some Dauntless, a little bit of Star Citizen. I like talking about Star Citizen on my channel and getting everyone involved. Um, Dauntless is like Monster Hunter co-op online stuff and it's pretty good. I've been playing uh, it a little bit and following it. Um, Gamescom. I will be covering Gamescom with an overview of the presentation, individual breakdowns as appropriate, um, of everything Star Citizen-y, uh, and a ship buyer's guide for the 600i, assuming that's what they um, actually sell there, and anything else that might turn up. Uh, thank you so much to Danky and the corporation. You've gone above and beyond with supporting my channel uh, last month. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, I believe I have now resolved any issues I had with um, some of my videos being demonetized, so uh, YouTube actually seemed to have got their fingers out their asses and actually helped me. So thank you so much, guys. Like, it's been a, a crazy few weeks for me uh, with my friend's wedding and a million and ten, like, IRL things to do. I might do on Board Gamer Extra and on the stream some cooking as well um, at some point. I am a chef. Um, I used to be a chef before I went into YouTube, anyway, and ran restaurants and stuff. So um, I have got some skills, or at least I'm very good with recipes. But we'll see. Anyway, every month we give away a ship. For August, it is an OxQ. All you need to do is be subscribed to my YouTube channel. I'm coming on, on any of my Star Citizen videos during the month. Uh, any questions about Alpha 3.0 or Star Citizen's development in general, or delays, or schedule reports, or burn downs, uh, a special thank you to my Patreons who allow me to create the amount of content I do. If you are interested in becoming one of them, there is a link to Patreon below, as well as everything else we've talked about. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the verse.